So today we start a brand new unit on trig ratios. This is part of trigonometry and this is one of the most important things that you need to learn this year. So take good notes and let's pay attention. So trigonometry, especially the trig functions we're going to talk about today, came about because people needed a way to find unknown distances and angles. And old-fashioned surveying, the tools that they had at the time, were difficult to use and if you didn't have them with you it was really hard to figure out. So building structures of significant size created another need to be able to measure large distances without a ruler or tape measure. So mathematicians, astronomers, and scientists discovered that right triangles could be used to help them find their unknown distances and angles. So the trig ratios we talk about come from those right triangles. They have to do with the proportion of the sides. So let's define the different trigonometry ratios we're going to use. But first of all, we need to know a little more about the right triangles and their angles. So here I have a right triangle. This is triangle ABC. Note that there is one right angle and two acute angles in a right triangle. And trig functions only work on the acute angles. We will never use trig functions on the right angle itself. So let's take a look at angle A. We're talking this angle down here with a green arrow. We're going to call that angle measure theta. Theta is like a variable. Um, when we use x in an equation to replace a number, theta is used the same way in an angle for a degree measure. So I can say theta equals 30 degrees or whatever my angle measure could be. So the side across from theta, we're going to call that the opposite side. This side is opposite from our angle. The side across from the right angle is always called the hypotenuse, of course. You already know that. And the side right next to the angle or to the side of the angle, I can also say that it's touching that angle or part of that angle, is called the adjacent side. Now notice I have two sides that are next to theta, but one of those will always be the hypotenuse. So when I say the adjacent side, it's always the side that's next to the angle that's not the hypotenuse. What if I talk about angle C instead? Let me just show you the difference. What if I move theta over to angle C so that I'm talking about this angle. Well, the hypotenuse will stay in the same place, of course. The things that will change, though, is now side BC is the adjacent side because it's next to the angle. And side AB becomes my opposite side because that's the side that's opposite of angle theta or across from. So make sure you're paying super close attention to which angle we're talking about. We're going to go talking about or go back to talking about angle A. So trig functions come from the ratios of two triangle sides. The first one is called sine. I call this the sine of theta. This tells me what angle I'm talking about. I could also have said the sine of A. The sine function is defined as the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse. That would be this purple side over here over the hypotenuse length. Then we have the cosine function. Cosine of theta, I also could have said cosine of A, is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse length. And finally, we have tangent. Tangent of theta is defined as the opposite side over the adjacent side. And again, these are just proportions. 
These are just ratios so that I can uh, use those later to help me find other items. Make extra sure that these three trig functions make it into your notes. We're going to have to memorize those and we're going to use them a lot. Pause the video if you need more time. So I'm going to take this triangle and I'm going to put some side lengths on it. So now my hypotenuse is 5. I have one leg of the triangle that's 3 units long and the other leg is 4 units long. So if I look at, again I'm going to have angle A, B, theta. If I look at the sine of theta, remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I take the opposite side, which is 3, over the hypotenuse, which is 5, so the sine of theta is 3 fifths. That means the uh, opposite side to the hypotenuse has a 3 to 5 ratio. The cosine, which remember was adjacent over hypotenuse, again I'm looking for the adjacent side next to theta. The adjacent side is 4, and the hypotenuse again is 5, so the cosine is 4 fifths. Tangent, of course, is defined as opposite over adjacent. So I look at the opposite side and the adjacent side, and that's going to give me a ratio of 3 fourths. Don't forget to memorize the trig function ratios. There's a little way that uh, people use to help them memorize. This we say is SOCATOA. It's a little mnemonic that people use. Um, the first one, the SO means sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. CA says cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse. And TOA means tangent is opposite over adjacent. So Katoa. You may have heard people saying that before. This is what we're talking about. Don't forget the quiz. We're going to wrap it up for today. We'll do more on trig functions in class. Have a great day. Don't forget your notes and see you later.